Today, we're looking at a black ink by Thornton's Black. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps down below so that you can skip around, but if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, if you're interested, you can follow me on Instagram, and if you're new here, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Retro 51 Tornado with a broad nib to write for a day and to take my notes for this video. In order to have some standardization in my writing samples, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in cartridge form because the only way at that time I was able to find it was in these boxes of cartridges. Now I do think they have bottles available. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade, nine seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, and 13 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation and we didn't get it in the writing. Tomoy River. No bleeding, normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 13 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 20 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation, and we didn't get it in the writing. And Rhodia, with no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 10 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation, and there wasn't any. I agree with Vita. I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And this is a very interesting black in that it's a very complex in its makeup. It would make you expect it to always have a very dark, very rich black. We start out with green at the bottom. Now that green is forming a line and pushing in there quite a bit to start with. It pushes its way up and we get a blue and then a very light red. So it's a lot making this black. Now the one on the right I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. That green shows itself to be much darker than what was expected. It has really bonded with this filter paper very quickly and it's not budging, not most of it. A lot of that blue that does push up, it's lighter than it originally was, which does make me feel like some of it is staying behind in that line. Now the red is about the same as what we had in the original chromatography, but I do expect to see some resistance for this ink. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I'm surprised by the blowout that's occurred with the lowercase h. I really expected this to stay there much better with that, I probably wouldn't use it in a note-taking situation. Now, before we get to where the water is, I do have to comment on this swab of ink that, based on the chromatography, I really expected it to be much darker and much more there. Some areas of it are much lighter, and with that, the writing typically is not too bad, though. Now, water is lifting the darkest portion, but not a whole lot of it. It's really leaving a lot of that green behind. So is pen flush. So 
The pen flush is really leaving the green. It looks like it's just beginning to break that green down. I did have to use pen flush to get this out of my pen. I did not need to use the one-third bleach solution. The one-third bleach solution does completely remove it from the paper, but it leaves a little bit of a brown staining behind. Again, I didn't need to use that to get it out of my pen. For the inks I tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with a realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Now I'm going to link the video that shows how I do my testing and calculations. Thornton's black ink has a viscosity of 2.4, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tumway River, and Rhodia paper. I average those. Now for the inks I have tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Thornton's Black has an average dry time of 13 seconds, making it still normal. Instead of finding inks that look like Thornton's Black, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went for a nice turquoise, and I chose Robert Oster's Deep Sea. The second writing sample is done on Twisby and Moleskin paper. Here we're looking at Twisby notebooks. Now we get no bleeding, minor ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is just a tad lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 8 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation, and we didn't get it in the writing. Well, it's an inexpensive ink. What happens with an inexpensive paper? So we're going to check the Moleskine. Yes, we get bleeding. Yes, we get ghosting because of all the bleed. Here's the thing about all of this. This is a top flipping notebook, which is what I prefer. So the back of the page isn't the end of the world to me. Also, this does not touch the page underneath. So it's not affecting my next page of writing. So this isn't horrible. You just can't use the back of the page. The medium has feathering all over it, tons of feathering. It's gross feathering. It's really bad. It's certainly much lighter than any of the tones we've seen with the other papers. No spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as that medium. The Now I have to... The, it does have feathering. If you really look at it, look at the word lazy, look at the word the, the word over, the word jumps, the word... All of it has tiny feathering all over it. For a pocket-sized notebook where you're just jotting down some ideas, I don't see that as the end of the world, but it could be a little bit distracting to some people. There's no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, two seconds to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation, and we didn't get any in the writing. And that is all that I have for writing samples. So what do I think of Thornton's Black? This writes darker than the swatch would lead you to believe. It was a very well-behaved and surprisingly resistant ink. So what nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? You need to use a wet medium or fine to get a good dark line. If you're using a dry pen, it really will start to look kind of like a gray. I put out a new ink review every single day so that if you're not already subscribed, I'm going to remind you, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.